Welcome to Two Minute Tech Tuesdays. My name is Thais, and this episode is about banning, which is a concept in Varnish to remove outdated content from the cache so that new content can be presented immediately rather than waiting for the cache to expire. What better use case than a news website where a breaking news story needs to end up on the front page of the website? Rather than sitting around and waiting, which is unacceptable, you actively remove the object from the cache and ensure that the breaking news story is published immediately. That is what this video is about, but it may sound surprisingly similar to last week's video about purging, which is also a concept in Varnish to remove objects from the cache. Now, I won't be comparing them in this video. I would highly recommend that you have a look at the video of last week to see for yourself what purging is. The only thing I can say in advance is that banning is slightly more flexible and a bit more complicated than purging. But I'll let the video do the talking. Two minutes has been put on the timer. Allow me to elaborate what banning can do for you. Banning is a mechanism in Varnish to remove multiple objects from the cache at once by issuing ban expressions. Here's an example of such a ban expression. As you can see, there's a field to match, there's an operator and there's a value. So in this case, we're removing all the objects from the cache that have a status code greater than 200. Here's another example where we have a double equal sign operator to do an exact match and where we use a logical AND operator to chain multiple conditions to one another. Bands can be invoked through varnish ADM by running the band subcommand. The band expression that we want to match against the objects is added as an extra argument. However, we can also use HTTP to get the job done. And for that, we need some VCL. This VCL code looks surprisingly similar to the one we saw in last week's video. And as a matter of fact, we're actually reusing the purge request method to trigger the invocation. But we're adding an extra request header called X invalidate pattern. The value of the X invalidate pattern request header contains the URL pattern that we want to match against the objects and remove from the cache. We use this value as well as the host header to compose a full ban expression and to invoke through VCL's ban function. And in the end, we return synthetic HTTP confirming the ban invocation. And the rest of the code is just there to optimize the processing of the bans. In a production environment, an extra layer of security needs to be added to avoid unauthorized bans. We do this by defining an access control list that contains IP addresses, host names, and subnets where the client can connect from. This is enforced in the VCL receive code through this conditional. So if the client IP address doesn't match the ACL, a 405 method not allowed error is returned. Here's an example of an HTTP request that is used to trigger a ban. It's important to use the purge request method. It is also essential that you specify a URL pattern through the X invalidate pattern request header. And of course, the right host header needs to be specified as well. And this is the potential HTTP response you may get from Varnish. In terms of implementation, we can translate the HTTP request into the following curl command or use whatever HTTP client or dedicated Varnish plugin that your framework offers. That was it, now you know how banning works, and if you looked at last week's episode about purging, you can now make the comparison between purging and banning and see what works best for you in terms of cache invalidation. Thanks for watching, I'll be back next week with yet another video.